Welcome, greetings and virtual hugs to you. And thank you all for coming to our third virtual honors celebration. My name is Lori Renee. I'm tonight's MC and voice behind the scenes. Together with Martin Library's Honors Committee, community friends and staff, we bring you tonight's special event honoring Linda Randall. We have some remarkable tribute speakers with us tonight to tell us more about Linda and her impact on our community. We'll hear from Carolyn Schaefer, Linda's daughters, Julie Randall Romig and Lauren Randall Buckley, and Mike Kokenauer. I have a few housekeeping items I want to tell you about before we begin. Your audio and video will be turned off during the event. You can see and hear us, but we can't see you. So if you're modeling your ugly sweater con for the next ugly sweater contest, only you and your dog are going to know. So stay comfy and warm at home. Feel free to open your chat feature and type a message to the event organizers. Please know that your message may be seen by everyone in attendance. Be aware that this event is being recorded for marketing purposes. We kick off tonight's ceremony with our honors trivia game. During the event, your screens will prompt you with a poll and you can participate by selecting the answer on your screen. Round one is gonna contain four questions about Martin Library and round two has four questions about Linda. You will have approximately 20 seconds to answer each question. The viewer who answers every question correctly wins the coveted York County Library's golf umbrella. <clears throat> we'll notify the winner by email tomorrow. And who knows, maybe everybody wins. We really do have quite a time planned for you. Linda is a woman of influence in York County and loved dearly by Martin Library. Let's begin tonight's event with some trivia about women who've had some influence at Martin Library throughout the years. Question number one on our trivia for tonight. This person served as the head librarian of Martin Library beginning in 1935. Was it Jeanette Woolsey, Irma Pence, Catherine Shorey, or Betsy Ross? Look at that vintage picture of our reading room. You know, I got married in that reading room. I love that room. Doesn't look like that now. Let's find out the correct answer. Catherine Shorey was the most tenured librarian at Martin Library, eventually retiring in 1970. We found a gem in these files dating back to 1960s. In the photo on the left, Ms. Shorey and Florence Collins checked the returned books for evidence of odd bookmarks. Ms. Shorey said, money, laundry checks, report cards, shopping lists occasionally end up as bookmarks. I'm sure there are still odd bookmarks left in our books these days, but I'd be surprised if there's money and laundry checks in those books. So I hope you got that question right, but let's move on to number two. Who served as the first female chair of Martin Library's Board of Directors? Is it Frances Wolfe, Dory Leader, Martha Landis Martin, or Ruth Crayley? Well, this one's tough all strong and notable women from York County. You think you know the answer? Frances Wolfe was the first female chair of Martin Library Board of Directors in 1988. Since that time, the board chair's positions have been filled by quite a few notable women, such as Jan Harold, Krista Stein, Jackie Summers, to name a few. York County Libraries has also seen some standout names serving as board chair, including Barb Carball, Marsha Everton, Betty Carson, Jody Keller, and our very own Linda Randall. Again, all outstanding women of York County representing our libraries. On to number three, question number three. The York County artist's work is featured in the Martin Library Children's Room with her Hey Diddle Diddle character sculpture. Is it Nancy Woodrow? Ophelia Chambliss, Brenda Wintermeyer, or Loran Jacobs. Every single one of these women are extremely talented, but only one created this adorable sculpture that you can see in our children's library. The answer is, Hey Diddle Diddle featuring the cat and the fiddle, the cow and the moon, the spoon and the dish was sculpted by Loran Jacobs. 
This piece, weighing 120 pounds and standing 42 inches tall, was installed in 2005 as part of Martin Library's expansion project. Inspired by the turtle baby, Jacobs also sculpted the bronze girl statue that stands nearby. Loran Jacobs' works are found all around York, including The Thinker on the corner of Philadelphia and George Streets, the Vietnam Memorial at the York Fairgrounds, the World War II statue in Continental Square, and many more. So how's everybody doing so far? I have one more question for round one. The final question of this round, the turtle baby sculpture located in the outdoor garden of the children's room was created by whom? Edith Parsons, Loran Jacobs, Georgia O'Keeffe, or Frida Kahlo? I love this statue. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. It's just adorable and I, it's really my favorite. <laughs> and the sculptor is Edith Barreto Stevens Parsons, was an American sculptor born in 1878. Miss Parsons' best known works are the garden sculpture she made between 1911 and 1930. The Duck Baby, the Turtle Baby, the Frog Baby, the Joy Fountain, the Little Duck Fountain, the Big Duck, and the Baby Pan. When Martin Library expanded in the 1950s with the Children's Library, Mr. William H. Baker found the statue of Turtle Baby in France and brought it back specifically to be incorporated into a fountain in the new children's area. How's everybody think they did on that trivia so far? I hope everybody got them right because we wanna give away a lot of umbrellas. Now to formally welcome you to today's event, it is my honor and privilege to introduce Robert F. Lambert, president of York County Libraries. Both a familiar and friendly face at Martin Library, please give a round of virtual applause as we greet Robert. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Laura Renee, for that wonderful introduction. <clears throat> it is my honor and privilege to welcome you to our virtual honor ceremony here at Martin Library. We are so delighted to share with you today's event, honoring community icon, Linda Randall, Linda, Chair of the YCL Board of Directors and Co-Chair of our Countywide Capital Campaign, has long served and supported our York County Libraries, helping to build our capacity, our reach, and our vision. There are many words to describe Linda, many of which are echoed by her tribute speakers tonight, A true entrepreneur, innovator, collaborator, mentor, passionate, and committed, those are just a few words that describe our dear friend, Linda. You'll hear special tributes tonight from Carolyn Schaefer, creator of Her Traditions at Traditions Bank, the Randall Daughters, Julian Romig, and Lauren Buckley, Mike Kockenauer, founder and chair of Traditions Bank and co-chair of our YCL Capital Campaign. At the core of our honors event is the people we celebrate. We couldn't ask for anyone better than Linda Randall to honor today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our good friend, Bob Cox, chair of the Martin Library's Honors Committee. Please join me in a virtual round of applause as we invite Bob to acknowledge today's event and to recognize our honorees. I wanna do a couple of things. I wanna thank all of you for attending. Uh, it's certainly been frustrating for all of us, and I'm sure for all of you. We would love to do these in person, and we hope that our next one, or the one after that, certainly will be back in person again at the York Library, at the Martin Library. Before I get started, though, I want to do a couple of things. I want to thank the staff, Janine Flaum and Bridget Vignu, who do all of the heavy lifting on this event, and Robert for being the leader that we need at the time that we need him. I'd also like to thank the members of the Honors Committee, Brenda Elby, Lynn Daniel, Donna Pullo, Rebecca Sandsteed, and Lori Renee Wyant for all of their involvement. Lori Renee, who you're hearing from this evening. I wanna give you a little briefing on Linda. Most of you probably know exactly who she is, but just in case someone out there does not. Linda O'Burn Randall has an MD or a Master of Education and is a partner in New Level Advisors, a management consulting company. She's an experienced trainer, public speaker, and facilitator with experience in developing and implementing programs for nonprofit organizations. 
Linda is an invaluable and inspiring leader in your county and serves on the board of directors for many local organizations such as the YWCA, Creative York, your county libraries, just to name a few. Linda is also the recipient of many prestigious awards such as the 2010 Athena Award and leadership for leadership by the York County Chamber of Commerce and the 2012 Women of Influence Award from the Central Pennsylvania Business Journal. Linda's love of libraries began as a child when she would visit the Reading Public Library every Saturday morning with her father to take out as many books as she could carry. When her family moved to Camp Hill and Linda knew no one, the library became a refuge. As a young mother, Kreitz Creek Library was the first building Linda and her small daughters visited when they moved to York and continued to visit weekly. When she, asked to serve, when she was asked to serve as co-chair of YCL's capital campaign, her love of libraries and reading compelled her to say yes. And we do have a uh, very pleasant uh, additional honor to heap onto her already numerous accolades, accolades but uh, we just got an announcement that Representative Carol Hill Evans will be presenting a citation from the Pennsylvania House of Representatives in honor of Linda Randall. Congratulations, Linda, on this well-deserved honor. Roy Renee, I believe you're up. Thank you, Bob. You're right. Okay, well, I hope everybody um, is having a great time already. We really do appreciate you joining us tonight. And who's ready for another round of trivia? Let's kick off round two with some fun facts about Linda and her favorite books. Upon moving to York County, which library did Linda take her two daughters to visit? Do you think it was Martin Library, Cult Writer Benfer, Kreitz Creek, or Dover Area Community Library? And three of these libraries, Martin, Cult Writer, and Kreitz Creek, are all going under major improvements right now thanks to the recent YCL Capital Campaign. Well, let's see which one Linda took her family to. It was the Kreitz Creek Library. She would take her toddler and baby daughter, and they, that's where they would visit to get their books. The Randall family became frequent visitors of the Kreitz Creek Library for story times, borrowing books, and more. This little library is in the process of moving to a newly renovated 8,000 square feet after more, this is way more space because they only had 1,200 square feet prior. So I'm sure that they're in heaven there um, in library land. Linda, Julie, and Lauren, we're excited for you once again to visit Kreitz Creek Library and see the new space that it now occupies. Next question. Linda founded this organization to create an opportunity for women to share their experiences and challenges in a supportive environment. Which organization do you think it was? Women's Network of York, Women's Business Center Organization, the Women's Club of York, or the Professional Women's Alliance? It's a very impressive accomplishment to have created an organization like this. So let's see what the answer is. Linda started the Women's Business Center organization at York College because there were no business education organizations for women in York at the time. With Linda's continued support and leadership, the, y, the WBCO transitioned from York College to the York County Economic Alliance where she continues to serve on their advisory council. It's a fantastic organization. Thank you, Linda, for inspiring and empowering women in business and in the community. All right, so now that we have a bit more insight into Linda's life, let's take a look at some of her favorite books. Next question. Edith Wharton, author of one of Linda's favorite books, The Age of Innocence, was the first woman to win what coveted prize? The Pulitzer, the Women's Prize for Fiction, National Book Critics Circle Award or the John Newberry Medal. I'm noticing the theme continuing here tonight, highlighting strong and talented women. Anyone else see that? Let's see what prize she got. In 1921, Edith Wharton became the first woman to win a Pulitzer Prize. It was the fourth year of the prize's existence. The judges established Wharton as the American First Lady of Letters. The story is set in the 1870s in upper class gilded New York City. And you guessed it, you can check this book out at York County Libraries. 
All right, we have one final question for you tonight. For inspiration and writing gifts from the sea, Anne Morrow Lindbergh did what activity while on vacation? Did she build sandcastles, take photographs of the waves, write messages in the sand, or collect seashells on the beach? I enjoy all of those activities. I have not written a book yet. <laughs> But Lindbergh wrote the essay styled work by collecting shells on the beach for inspiration and reflecting on the lives of Americans, particularly American women. While on vacation in Florida's Captiva Island in the early 1950s, Lindbergh shared her meditations on youth and age, love and marriage, peace, solitude, and contentment in the book. As an aside, Anne Morrow Lindbergh became the first woman to receive a U.S. glider pilot license in 1930. Of course, this classic is also, also available to check out at your favorite York County Library. How do you think you did? Did everybody get all the answers right? Maybe a few? I'm pretty sure we're gonna have an umbrella winner out there. <laughs> well, now that we've had a little insight into Linda, as well as some of her favorite books, it's time to hear from her tribute speakers. Honoring this remarkable woman with their recorded tributes, I am pleased and privileged to introduce our dear friends Carolyn Schaefer, passionate leader and creator of Her Traditions at York Traditions Bank, Julie Randall Romig and Lauren Randall Buckley, daughters of Linda and young professionals themselves, and Mike Kokenauer, founder and chairman of Traditions Bank, community leader and supporter of our libraries. Please watch along as they share their tributes. Good evening, my name is Carolyn Schaefer and I'd like to start by saying I love Linda Randall and all that she stands for. Linda has been a jewel in our community for many years and I consider it a privilege to know her, but also to be able to call her not only a professional colleague, but my friend as well. When I first met Linda years ago, I was immediately impressed by her humility, her quiet confidence, and her ability to engage others in accomplishing a mission. Let me give you an example. Linda was working for the J.D. Brown Entrepreneurial Center as a consultant back in 2006 and recognized the need for education of women in business and additional resources to help support them in their endeavors. Linda pulled together a group of five ladies and together we began discuss discussions on just how to best make that happen. It was through Linda's leadership and through her tenacity that the Women's Business Center organization was founded. The initial gathering started with approximately 30 people and pre-pandemic in March 2020, that number had elevated to 200. The Women's Business Center organization is now also under the umbrella of the YCEA. So Linda's recognition and vision of a need in um, York County among women led to an organization that continues to inspire and create leaders. An organization that has left an immeasurable educational contribution to York County. Because of Linda's strong passion for uh, building confidence in women, it was a natural fit for me to ask her to participate in a project I was working on at the time for your Traditions Bank, a project that eventually became known as Her Traditions. Linda uh, served as a charter member of our Her Traditions Women's Council and the group is uh, charged with helping to identify tools to take the mystery out of finances and also strengthen women's financial knowledge. Thank you, Linda, for continuing to serve on that committee. All of these successes, among countless others, led to Linda being named an Athena recipient in 2010. Community service, leadership, 
professional excellence, mentoring of other women are all attributes and pillars of an Athena. Attributes that Linda lives and role models. So a huge congratulations to you, Linda Randall, on being named Martin Library's honoree for this year. What a well-deserved recognition of all you have done to promote, to support, and to educate women in our community. You're a difference maker, lady. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Lauren Randall Buckley. Hi, I'm Julie Randall Romig. And we are thrilled that our mother, Linda Randall, is a Martin Library honoree. She spent the early years of her career sharing her love of learning and reading with children as a kindergarten through third grade teacher, and has now dedicated the second half of her career to supporting the York community and the organizations that are near and dear to her and our family, including the library system. As you all know, she is somebody who gives endlessly, patiently, and without reserve to the people and organizations that she cares deeply about. So we are thrilled that she is getting to feel the return of all of the positive energy that she generates through this honors program tonight. One of my earliest childhood memories is visiting Kreitz Creek Library with my mother and sister, where we would attend story times and have the privilege of then exploring the library shelves and picking books to bring home with us. There was something magical about all of those stories and adventures right at our fingertips, and it felt like we were being given gifts each time we checked out our books to bring home. What I didn't realize until later in life is that those trips to the library and the regular intentional focus on opportunities for my sister and I to develop a love of reading and an appreciation for literature and libraries was a gift not every child is given and that we were incredibly blessed to have a mother who ensured it was one that we received. Our mother's regular encouragement of reading and celebration of writing and authors fostered a deep love of literature and learning in our household. We became better students, better citizens, and better mothers because of this early influence and access. When our own children were born, our mother, now Anona, ensured that story time and cherished books were shared with all of her five grandchildren. Because two of her grandchildren lived locally, she was also able to introduce them to the immense thrill of exploring the local library to find books that would entertain and inspire them to continue reading. It has been a full circle moment with our local libraries at the center as I watched my own children develop into better students and better citizens through their love of reading and learning nurtured by their Nona. There are many of the same wonderful memories of visiting Crates Creek Library as a child and many of the books that I read during the time that I visited there with my mom have become my favorite books for reading with my children as well. I also have many great memories as I grew up and became a young adult of going to Martin Library with my mom it always marked the start of summer and beach vacations to go and pick way more books than we would ever be able to read. My mom also had a huge influence on me and the children that she taught and on her grandchildren related to the process of how books come to be through the writing process. My mom wrote quite a bit as a young woman, didn't have quite as much time when she had two little kids and passed on her typewriter to me and would spend countless hours listening to me read her the stories that I had written on that typewriter ultimately culminating when I was in high school and her encouraging me to participate in the poetry contest at Martin Library, that my whole family came um, to listen to the competition and the winners got to have their poems kept at Martin Library forever, which was very exciting as a high school student. As my sister and I shared, our family benefited tremendously from our mother's passion for libraries and her efforts to introduce us to a love of reading, writing, and learning from her earliest ages. In addition to her influence on our lives, she has also influenced the lives of many through her continued dedication to ensuring libraries are accessible resources for all children and adults throughout our community. We are so grateful to the library for recognizing her dedication and honoring our mother with this recognition and thank the library's board of directors, staff, volunteers, and supporters for your continued efforts to inspire future generations of readers and leaders. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mike Kockenauer, founder and board chair for Traditions Bank. And I know we joined together with uh, the combined thought of we surely look forward to the day that we can do these kind of events where we're recognizing some of our local heroes in person versus via live stream. Uh, but for now, this is the approach that we have and we're all going to make the best of it. I am so privileged to participate here and to share a few comments 
about Linda Randall, our 2021 fall honoree. Linda is so humble, always seeking to shine the light on others. So this is a most treasured opportunity for us to take to recognize and celebrate this extraordinary woman, highly regarded business entrepreneur and community leader, and for me, a dear friend. Words that describe Linda are accountable, caring, trustworthy, integrity plus, relationship driven, respectful of others, always doing right by people, open-minded, creative, an innovator of effective process, and a consummate collaborator. And she loves to have fun and just genuinely loves people. She's a champion for people and is an enthusiastic cheerleader. She defines servant leadership. Given the lofty recognition she's received over time as an Athena, <clears throat> as a woman of influence, as a founder of the WBCO, as a chair and active director for so many nonprofit organizations and educational and cultural based organizations across our community, her reputation is impeccable and she has had a so significant <laughs> impact in distinguishing uh, and delivering on the mission of those organizations. She is a go-to person and business and community leader that is sought out for leadership, counsel, and mentoring. She is a friend to so many. I so admire the passion and quiet determination she brings to everything she does. Her lifelong connection and commitment to the libraries is well documented. So it was no surprise when she agreed to serve as co-chair for the tremendously successful $6 million York County Library Capital Campaign. And I am so proud and honored to have served right beside her as her co-chair. With Linda's influence, and uniquely insightful perspective and the help of our dynamic library staff, we structured our campaign in a unique way from other capital campaigns. By having teams of a female and a male leading all divisions and committees at every level of the campaign. Having these combined perspectives of leadership was a major factor in our success. And I attribute it right back to Linda's upfront knowledge, perspective, and insight in seeing what can make a difference, how can we be different, and how can we drive the greatest results uh, for this so important campaign uh, and mission by collaborating and pulling uh, our teams together. <clears throat> and let me tell you, Linda is that person in the room who always makes sure that every person is acknowledged, is appreciated, and has their voice heard. Linda, thank you for being you. Congratulations on yet another most deserved recognition as our 2021 fall honoree. A heartfelt thanks to Rich and to your entire family for sharing you with us. Our lives are enriched by your presence and the York County Library System is stronger and growing from your passionate service and leadership. We're so proud again to come together today and honor you for being you. Thank you for everything you do uh, and please Take a moment, step back, let us shine this light on you and enjoy this recognition for being a true impact player for the libraries and for our community uh, very broadly. Thanks, and again, congratulations, dear friend. I truly believe in the power of libraries to transform people's life. Libraries are the lifeblood of a community. They're important for the health of the community, the well-being of the community, and the education of everyone in the community. And we have to remember that libraries serve everyone.
An investment in libraries is an investment in lifelong learning and high quality education for children, for adults, and for teens. Thank you to our tribute speakers. We really appreciate your time and sharing your stories about Linda and what a great way to reflect on their stories with Linda's own words. Linda is a shining star in our community, being a lifelong mentor, library advocate, philanthropic leader, and a woman who truly loves the power of community. Linda, we welcome you to share your comments and remarks. Viewers, let's give it up for Martin Library's 2021 fall honoree, Linda Randall. I am very, I'm really overwhelmed um, by those tributes. Just give me a moment. I guess when everyone was talking about me, they should have said I cry easily because I do. Um, my heart was so touched and I'm gonna be okay now. Okay. So I'm so deeply touched by the kindness and the eloquence and the generosity of my beloved daughters, Julie and Lauren, um, by my great friend and great supporter, Carolyn Schaefer, and by Mike, another dear friend who I couldn't have ever found a better partner to co-chair the capital campaign. Um, thank you to everyone who is viewing this Zoom tonight. And um, thank you for your contributions. Uh, a quote that I use frequently um, and means more tonight than ever, one evidence of a heart touched by grace is a heart overflowing with generosity. And I have been overwhelmed by your overflowing generosity. Um, thank you, Susan and Robert, Janine, Bridget and Lori. I have had the privilege of collaborating with the staff here during the capital campaign and also as my in my tenure as a board member and board chair. They are so highly skilled, they're so hardworking, and they are great stewards of the library's resources. Thank you, Bob, and thank you to the Honors Committee for continuing the splendid work that you do. Uh, to quote Albert Einstein, the only thing that you absolutely have to know is the location of the library. And Bob alluded to how I use libraries throughout my entire life, um, ending up with my grandchildren at Kreitz Creek and Martin Memorial Library. It has been a privilege and such an honor to be able to serve the York County library system. Uh, we use the term giving back way too much, but it is my small way to serve this library in the hopes that future generations will be able to benefit from libraries as much as I have. Um, libraries have been um, a refuge at certain times in my life. They have enriched me, educated me, entertained me, and challenged me. My hope is for future generations to be able to have accessible public libraries. And the York County library system is making sure that that's going to happen. Um, you know, as I made my way through all these libraries in my life, I found a quote about the, about the next stage, which probably won't be for 20 more years, but it says, I have always imagined that paradise will be a kind of library. So thank you all for your uh, generosity, your kindness, for saying those unbelievable things about me. Um, you touched my heart, I'll never forget it. Thank you. Linda, it's my pleasure again to, uh, to honor you as the honoree for today. Uh, it's, it's absolutely a pleasure for me. I must tell you that I've, I've chaired any number of these events and half time they turn into a roast. No one, 
<laughs> say about you. All they said is how wonderful you were, what it was to work with you, and what a community gem you are. So it's time for the unveiling of the gift. I think we, we sent you a gift in advance. Uh, it's not as I promised you yesterday, but I hope you enjoy it. Would you open it now for everyone to share? Yeah, and I want to thank my husband, Rich. He wanted to do a tribute, but I thought maybe just my two daughters might be enough. Uh, plus, yeah, so anyway, so here it is. It's quite heavy. Wow, I don't, it's really heavy. Oh, how beautiful, how beautiful. Martin Light. Library Honors Committee presents a tribute to Linda Randall. Can you see it? There you go. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And no, thank no, you for this no. night. It's been wonderful. I, I could have taken a roast a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more easily than those kind remarks. So thank exactly. you. Well, let me turn it back to Robert for some closing remarks. Thank you, Laura Renee. Thank you, Bob. And thank you so much, Linda, for being tonight's special honoree. I, sh I thank you. <laughs> I thank you. Absolutely. We respect and, and recognize not only your leadership and community mind, but also your endless devotion to uh, literacy and learning. And so um, our thanks to everyone for being here tonight. We hope you enjoyed our celebration. Uh, thank you for your continued support and commitment to our York County Libraries. We want you all to stay well and be safe. And I am going to turn it back over to Lori Renee, who is going to wrap up this evening's event. Thank you, Robert. Well, that's our program for the evening. As they say, it's a wrap. It's time to start wrapping gifts. So I thought I'd throw that in there. Thank you, uh, viewers, for attending our virtual honors event. We hope you felt the love shared by everyone here tonight, both for each other and for our communities. Thank you for your support of our libraries. If you haven't already honored Linda with a gift to Martin Library, there's still time. Go to donate.yorklibraries.org to make your gift. Be on the lookout for an email later this week announcing our winner or winners of the trivia game. With love and thanks from your library family, enjoy the rest of your night. Stay well, stay safe. We hope to see you soon. I'd like to ask the Honors Committee members and tonight's speakers, including the tribute speakers, to remain on Zoom at the end of the, the presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.